Live from our newsroom, it's the Hard Times Podcast. With Bill Conway and Matt Sankum. Paris, I want to tell you something. Uh, okay, so I'm in the van. I'm on tour with my friends, and we're all talking about chrome eggs. And my brother, who got me into most of hardcore, uh, turns to me and he goes, you know, all these songs are actually written by this guy named Paris. I think he said he's an art student. Um, and uh, everyone else is more known in the band, but the guy who writes all the riffs is Paris. So, Paris, are you an art student? And did you write all the riffs? Was my older brother correct? I was an art student. I have a degree in, I have a bachelor's degree in fine arts. Um, but at, at some point during my education, uh, my agent is telling me I'm booked for law and order criminal intent on Sunday. Um, oh, yeah. I tra- awesome. I transferred to the film department, and that's why my agent is actually contacting me because I work as a camera operator. But I do have a degree in fine arts, although I, <clears throat> I, uh, I was distracted by uh, other You know, if you have multiple skills that you can monetize, you you really have to kind of just follow the opportunities. And I followed them into the film business and and, and into the music business. And I kind of left art behind as far as as far as the riffs. Well, I certainly wrote the riffs for Hard Times and many other Chrome Mag songs. And uh, and uh, I I was the primary riff writer for the Chrome Mags. And uh, but although I, I never wrote lyrics, I wasn't a lyricist. That was, uh, yeah. you know, early on we had our first singer was Eric Casanova and he wrote quite a lot of the lyrics uh, for the Age of Quarrel album. He wrote the lyrics to Life of My Own, Hard Times, Street, uh, Street Justice, Survival of the Streets. And, um, and then he left the band and then, you know, John came in and wrote quite a few lyrics and, uh, and, in, and earlier on, even before Eric was in the band, Harley wrote the lyrics to the song World Peace, which I wrote the music for. So uh, um, there was quite a few people in, who had a hand in writing the lyrics for Age of Quarrel. But certainly the um, what I always often refer to as the Cro-Mag Manifesto was written by Eric Casanova, you know, writing Survival of the Streets, Hard Times, Street Justice and Life of My Own. I mean, all the things that <clears throat> so many people feel uh, is the manifesto or the message of the band, at least, or the message of that album was Eric's the brand. Me- yeah, it was, it was Eric's message. And unfortunately he was kind of cheated out, out of his, uh, out of his uh, credit, which was the problem. You know, it's, it's even something like you having to ask me that question after all these years, even though the album says clearly all songs written by Paris Mayhew and Harley Flanagan, and my name is, first on the album but because when people hear something so often you know harley released a press release last year that said something like 35 years ago i wrote an album it's like you know but if you if you know if you say that often enough to to the converted you know you're preaching to the converted they just go oh yeah that's right he wrote it all even though they have the album in their hands and it says something quite the opposite and I find myself often <clears throat> having to answer these questions just to stave off, you know, public, you know, his PR. And it's funny because I actually won a, uh, a legal battle recently against him. Because what was that about? It was over the, the, uh, the URL, chromags.com, which Jesus I read. Christ. I can't even keep track of the Chromags lawsuits. You guys are fighting over URLs? Um, well, it's funny, you know, because this guy who owned Victory Records, some jerk off, I forget what his name is. He emailed Tony me. What's his name? Tony Brumell. It could be. I, he emailed me and, and initially was just like, I would like to buy the URL from you. And I didn't see it because it was on my uh, Paris at uh, email, which is something I just never look at. It was associated with the, uh, the Chromex website. And then at some point I checked the email and the, in the, the, the program, I guess, for that website is so old that like when you load the emails, it takes like 10 minutes just for them to pop up. And then every time you click on an email, it's like three minutes for it to open. So of course I never looked at it, but, uh, when all this stuff started going down, I went back and I looked at the emails and, and it was funny. There was like five consecutive emails from him, only a couple of days apart. And it's, and it's funny, like the only, 
The only kind of escalation I've ever seen in emails like that was like from ex-girlfriends where they were like, <laughs> oh, I, I miss you so much. And then when you don't respond, the next one is like, you motherfucker, I hate you. I'm really sorry. I behave. Then the next one is like, I'm going to kill you. You know, cut your nuts off. <laughs> that was the cadence of his emails to me. <laughs> Retrospect. Because he seemed very insulted that I didn't respond to him, even though I have no idea. What it is. And uh, the crux of it was that he wanted to purchase the the URL from me, saying that I was cyber squatting and he was using all these legal terms. And then the final email was saying that, uh, you know, I warned you, I'm going to come after you now legally. And then he didn't ultimately end up doing it. It was it was uh, Harley and his wife. And the the point of this, I was saying, is because, you know, they basically used Harley's press kit as their legal argument for why I was cyber squatting. So basically, a third, you, basically, a third party that had nothing to do with anything is coming in just because they they feel that like what ownership would they even have? I, I don't I don't even understand the you basis. You talking about Victor Records, Bill? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like well, how? I, I personally, you know, saw it as, I mean, I only in retrospect because I don't know the guy, but he's you know just the, what I've learned about him over those five emails and, and the way he. <laughs> the way he changed, he seemed very typical of a uh, record company folk. And um, I believe that he wanted to purchase it so he would have control over Harley. Okay. Control so, of the situation. I actually feel like I should sell it to him now. <laughs> so, you know what's interesting? This Tony from Victory Records guy, I've never met him, but he has to have one of the worst reputations in music, right? There Has anyone had any interaction with this man and said it was really positive it's like i remember being a little kid and having streetlight manifesto i think this is a correct story streetlight manifesto has a whole thing at the end of one of their albums saying like we don't care if a single record sold like fuck this label and then there's all these old jokes from the scene like it's really funny that the we should have him on the show <laughs> and here, and here, I bet you we'll have him on the show and he'll like somehow get us to sign some paperwork before we do. He'll own our show. He'll never give it back to us or something. 